Lieutenant Chewing Gum invites you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Ash, with Alan Reed as the swap. As you know, millions of people all over America enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. In offices, shops, and factories, on farms, in mines, in oil fields. Folks find Wrigley's Spearmint helpful while they work, and they enjoy it at other times, too. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint are glad that their product is making life a little easier and pleasanter for so many people, and they're glad to be able to bring you this radio program, Life with Luigi, which, like Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, is brought to you for your enjoyment and satisfaction. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, <laughs> there's the one the big thing about America, and that's the ways that they got to for doing a business. I'm going to remember when I was the first to come here, was a bigger sign, and it's to say, buy now, pay later. <laughs> well, I'm about to write away, what, but there was a bigger trouble. They no want to wait till late enough. <laughs> How about the food mix, the toaster, electric clock, oven, and a percolator? Then there came a time for the first payment. And the mamma mia, Amma had the emptiest the kitchen in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> but still, Amma got used to these things. And when Amma got the money later on, Amma bought them. And that's America. Everybody is to buy everything. Yesterday, Amma had a headache, so Amma went to the drugstore for a little box of aspirin. After a half an hour, I'm about to search the light, the two package of pipe cleaners, 30 foot of plastic guns and a hose, and the 89 cents of special lunch, because we're walking around it so much, I'm going to get a big appetite. <laughs> there was only one thing I'm going to buy, the little box of aspirin. <laughs> I'm going to have no money left for this. But then, especially in the big department of stores, you see smart business. If it's something don't sell it for $2 in a bag in the basement, they push them up to the fourth floor. Raise the price to $5, and everybody is to kill himself to buy. <laughs> so I'm going to try to keep my antique shop like a big store and be a big businessman and myself. And you should see me a little while ago when a lady is bought the antique for $20, and she's a say, Would you accept my check? Well, certainly, madam. I'm going to do business just like a big department store. Of course, you've got to identify yourself. Oh. Well, let me see what I have in my purse. All right. You see, I'm from California, and I don't have my driver's license or anything. Oh, say, this is a nice and nicer picture. Thank you. These are my two children standing with me. Well, it's a look like you, and if you say they're your two children, that's to prove it's you, so you identify yourself. No. <laughs> Here, Anna, you don't have to pay cash, or you can pay by check. And if you want, I take an installment of plan. How's about? Oh, no. No, thank you. Well, here you are. And I've had just as much fun shopping here as I would at any big department store. Oh, well, thank you. And come again, please. Goodbye. Well, Mamma Mia, how's that? My first customer by check. I'm a big man, you know? Well, I could hardly wait to tell my friends in the night school about... <laughs> Quiet, class, please. We have a lot to do tonight, so I'll dispense with the roll call. Ach, no, Miss Pauling, please call the roll. But <laughs> <laughs> well, why, Mr. Schultz? Because when you say Mr. Schultz and I say here, that's going to be the only correct answer I give all night. <laughs> well, let's see if you can surprise us. Reviewing our grammar, we'll begin with the punctuation mark. Mr. Schultz? Surprise! Well, I didn't ask the question yet. Oh. <laughs> what is a dash? A 50 yard dash or a 100 yard dash? <laughs> that is not funny. Give us a sentence illustrating a dash. All right. 
The girl asked for some scotch with a dash of soda. No, no. Miss Paul, do you want she should drink it straight? <laughs> Mr. Basco, will you help me out? Sure. You want to pay cash or with a check? <laughs> what? Or maybe you like a banana storm in the plan? Heavens. Mr. Horowitz, can you answer the question? Miss Pauling, if Luigi and Schultz couldn't, don't expect miracles from me. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Pauling, may I tell you all about the dash? So we can be true with it. There he goes, a true a blue old. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz. That's quite all right, Miss Pauling. I will just ignore the yes thing. Now, uh, about the dash. A dash is used to, to show an unexpected turn of thought in a sentence. Very good. Now give us an example. Yeah. Oh. Uh, the judge sentenced four men to Yale. Yon, Harold, James, and Yak. And they deserved it. <laughs> oh, how the distic can you get? <laughs> that was excellent, Mr. Olson. Now, Mr. Basco, I shall repeat the sentence. The judge sentenced four men to jail. John, Harold, James, and Jack. And they deserved it. Now, where would you place the dash? Between a John and a Jack. <laughs> uh, no. Oh? Huh? Between a Harold and a Jack? No. Hmm. Between a James and a Jack? No. Himmel, it looks like Chuck is going to take the rap for the whole gang. <laughs> enough out of you, Mr. Schultz, and as for you, Mr. Basco, you simply... No, 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 please, please, Miss Pollen, don't be mad with me. I'm a kind of hardly think of my lessons. Today, I'm a made of my first big business deal. I'm sold an antique and I took a check in a return. That's a big step for me. Always, I'm a had to have the cash to feel safe. But now, I'm American. I'm a take a check. Don't talk so fast, Luigi. If that check bounces, you'll wish you were Italian again. <laughs> That's not true at all, Schultz. Even for our joke. Luigi, I know how you feel. I was the same way when I first came over. Oh, congratulations, Luigi. And I hope you continue to learn so your business can increase twofold. My congratulations, too, Mr. Vasco. I want to thank you, class. Right now, I'm feeling so good. All I'm going to do is spend the $20. Oh, oh, Luigi, that's the worst you can do. No, the, the first thing a smart businessman learns is to, to have some money put away. So when a good buy comes along, he has the cash for it. Or a check. Yeah, or a check. If I were you, I would open up a savings account immediately. That's smart advice, Luigi. The man who saves money today is wise. You mean, I should take this at 20 and, and not celebrate? I should have put it away? Exactly. Yeah. If you feel that money is extra money, put it in the bank. Luigi, even I agree with that. Today, the money you make in your paycheck is like salami. Yeah, the government takes a slice. A slice goes off for Social Security. <laughs> Another slice for the landlord, the gas, electric, telephone company. Two slices for a sandwich. And if you've got a slice left over for the bank, put it in quick before the dog gets it. Hi. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Bank Teller. I'm a no one to start the checking account. I'm a one you should uh, save my money for me. How much do you charge? <laughs> Absolutely nothing, sir. The bank pays you. Huh? The bank is watching my money and then they pay me for this? That's our interest. Hmm, I didn't know you was so interested. <laughs> How much are you going to pay me? One percent per annum. All right. Uh, this annum, she's a get a one percent, but how much I'm a get? Uh? <laughs> Per annum means yearly. For instance, if you deposit a thousand dollars, one percent would be ten dollars. Ten thousand would be one hundred dollars, and a hundred thousand would be a thousand dollars. How much are you starting your deposit with? Twenty dollars. <laughs> I see. Well, uh, small deposits grow to large deposits. At the end of the year, the bank will give you twenty cents for your twenty dollars. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm rather have the twenty dollars. <laughs> oh no, the twenty dollars is yours plus the twenty cents. Oh, well, well, that sounds wonderful. That's a real the big business. All right, I start. Glad to have you. And every year, the bank will pay you interest on your principal. Money for my principal? That's right. Please, if you got to give it a 20 cents, don't give it my principal. Give it my teacher, Miss Baldwin. <laughs> Luigi, my 
my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, Pasquale, I'm got a big surprise. Look, look at what I'm got. A bank book. Yeah. Luigi, when you find those things, you should turn it right over to the cops. No, Pasquale, this the bank book is mine. Huh? Customers give me check for antique and my night school classes advise me to open a saving accounts and this is the book. Oh, so you've been taking advice from those paupers in your class. You buried that check in the bank, huh? What's the matter? Is there, is there something wrong? Luigi, I'm not saying nothing, but if you want to jump off for the bridge, who am I to stop you? <laughs> I just want to say one thing. You ever see any millionaires in the bank? Well, I don't know. Millionaires, they look like everybody else. Yeah? Let me answer for you. No. If a J.P. Rockefeller calls up a J.D. Morgan and he says, how's about a $2 million loan? What do you think Morgan's are going to say? What? He says, uh, I'll let you know tomorrow. Meanwhile, let me sleep on it. You know what this means? No. Means he's a kip as a money and as a mattress. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious. Luigi, if I'm told you once, I'm never told you, don't ever do those crazy things without asking me. I'm sorry, Pasquale. Maybe I'm not the smartest fellow in the world, but I keep my money in a mattress. And I learned this from a hard experience. Twenty-five years in America, you know, Luigi, I got the type of head that soaks up experience like a sponge. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Pasquale. Everybody says you're a real sponge head. Yeah. <laughs> that's a funny thing. When I'm saying it's a come out different. <laughs> Let me explain to you something, my little banana nose. Since when is it someone to pay somebody for doing them a favor? Hmm. I thought it was a something funny about it. Yeah, beginning to get a little sense in that cabbage you had, eh? <laughs> Luigi, look, if somebody comes into my spaghetti palace to eat, do I pay him? Well, uh, last week I saw you give money to a customer who's a when he got sick and I wanted to shut him up. <laughs> Luigi, nobody pays a nobody to do him a favor. Now, look, you want I should have called to the bank and get him mad and make him give you back your money? No, 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 Pasquale. I, I'm going to want to make it trouble. I'm going to go nice and, and get them my money back. All right. Just to walk in a slow so the bank guards don't get a suspicious. All right. <laughs> and then uh, fiddle around the table a little bit. Uh, fill up your fountain pen. Not too much, or they think you hard in ink. <laughs> make a few pictures on the blotter. Yeah. Then walk over to the teller. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Bank Teller? I'm a Luigi Basco, the new fella here. Do you remember my bank book? Certainly. Uh, were you having some trouble filling out a slip? No, I'm, I was just uh, drawing a few pictures. Oh, yes. Uh, you spend my money yet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. You think if I'm a took out, would it be bad for you? Of course not. Then I'm a take out. <laughs> well, I don't like to be inquisitive, but is there a reason? No reason, I'm... Um... Well, is it just I'm lonely without it? <laughs> well, all right. Oh, uh, you started with a $20 check on the California bank, didn't you? Oh, yes, sir. Well, uh, it was uh, one of my uh, out-of-town customers. Well, I'm afraid was I can't of... let you have your money. What? That's right. I just noticed your book number, and I remember, remember it. Hey, you can't do this. Your money isn't available for withdrawal. Never mind. Don't bother to explain. I'm going to want the trouble. But you don't understand. <laughs> no, I'm understand. Pasquale was right. I'm sure I never come here. I'm going to put the money in the bank yesterday, and today I'm out of business. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, we'd like to mention the refreshment you can get from a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. These days, when you spend a lot of time indoors, your mouth and throat are apt to feel unpleasantly dry. Well, just slip a stick of delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum into your mouth, start to chew, and see what a difference it makes. A lively, full-bodied, real spearmint flavor quickly freshens your taste. And the chewing moistens your throat and helps keep your mouth feeling refreshed and comfortable. It sweetens your breath, too. So always keep a package of refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Gum handy. Enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint often, every day. 
Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And I saw, Mamma Mia, what I'm a taught to was a big step in my life as American a businessman is not to turn out to too good. My trouble in the bank would have never happened if I'm a not took a customer's a check. But anyway, I'm a went to public library and I found out that in early American days there was a no credit in the stores. So I'm a come back into my antique shop and I put up a sign. Is it say, Washington and the Lincoln have paid the cash, why can't they you? <laughs> But does it make no difference because you no know, customers is come in? So I'm a sitting in my store, ashamed to see Pasquale when my door is open up. Luigi, my fellow booby. Himmel, what's the matter? You got a face that would make a Dachshund look happy. <laughs> Schultz, I'm a have a trouble with a bank. Yesterday I'm a put in the money like you told me. Yeah, yesterday you put it in. Well, today I'm a went to take it out. One day later? Luigi, with you, cold cash don't even get a chance to warm up. <laughs> Why did you take it out, the money? Well, the Pasquale has told me rock the fellas in no sleep on the bank, but he's got two million dollars in a mattress. <laughs> oh, Luigi, are you for shimmers? <laughs> Why do you even listen to that, Pasquale? If he had his way, the government would close up all the banks and open up one giant mattress. <laughs> yeah, instead of the Marshall Plan, it would be the Matres Plan. <laughs> yeah, but Schultz and Pasquale was right. I went to get back my money, and a man in the cage is say no. Oh, that's funny. Schultz, uh, you think the bank is uh, empty inside? Luigi, I think it's empty inside your head. Then uh, maybe you explain to me why I'm not getting my money. Yeah, well, I wish I could. Uh, Luigi, why don't you go down to the bank and speak to the manager? The manager? Sure, every bank has got it. The manager, go down and ask questions. Yeah, but sure, so you think this is going to make it trouble? Luigi, such a question from you? You are always saying, in America, a fella can go any place, do anything, and ask any questions he wants. Hey, Schultz, I don't know, but maybe America has changed. No, Luigi, you have changed. We got the same laws as we, now as we had when you came here. It's up to you to keep them. Schultz, you're right I'm going to go and ask you questions. In America, we ask you questions and we got answers. Sure. And I thank you, Schultz, for your help. Ah, that's nothing, Luigi. No. Smile. Eh? All right. <laughs> oh, good. Sure, Luigi. Be like me. Always happy, always loving. <laughs> oh. My rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Hawkins, uh, you're the only man who's not in a cage, so you must be the manager. Yes. Won't you sit down? Anything I can do for you? Oh, I'm uh, just the one to ask a few questions. How it feels to be manager of such a big bank, Mr. Hawkins? Oh, it's all right. Hmm. You make a nice living? Well, um, the rewards are ample, I dare say. You dare say, huh? <laughs> The bank, uh, the bank has always got the money to pay you your salary on a Saturday night. I'm sure you didn't come here to ask me about my personal affairs. I'm a sorry, Mr. Hawkins, but you see, I'm got a new account in your bank. My name is Luigi Basco. Well, well, glad to have you, Mr. Basco. Just what is your problem? Oh, oh is it no trouble, no trouble at all. You see, I'm a businessman, Mr. Hawkins, and like all the good businessmen. <laughs> I'm a thought, I'm a like to know how, uh, how safe is the place where I'm a keeping my money. Oh, a very good thought. Oh, thank you. Well, let's take a look at our latest report. Assets, $1,503,487,921.12. Hmm, must have been a one a poor fella. Yeah. <laughs> poor fellow? Who? The fellow who's a put in a 12 cents. Yeah. <laughs> Look here, sir. For twenty dollars, do you want me to show you the bank's balance sheet? Please, I'm the one to see nothing. I'm just the one to know one thing. What do you do with my twenty dollars? 
Mr. Basco, I tried to explain to you. Just tell the bank, invest your money. And if you... But who's a... asking you to invest it? I'm just asking you to watch it for me. Try <laughs> to understand, Mr. Basco. A bank cannot allow its money to remain idle. Mr. Hawkins, I'm no care how lazy my money is as long as you keep them in a bank. <laughs> That's not... That's not sound business practice. And if we did do that, how could people build houses? Make repairs if we didn't loan them money? Aha! Uh -huh. So you took my money and the loan to somebody. <laughs> Who was it? I'm going to want to see this man. Has he got an honest face or how am I going to know? It's not loan. Perhaps it's right in the vault. All right, open up the vault. <laughs> Mr. Basco, we do not open up vaults. The money is strongly guarded. It's a mine and I'm going to want to see it. Well, perhaps it's not even there. No, then, then I want it then. Perhaps in bonds. In a bonds, you can't buy bonds worth a $20. Well, perhaps in stock. We have many stocks. IT&T, Santa Fe Railway. Santa Fe Railway. How much does it cost at the stock? Well, I believe it's about 20 20 There's my money. <laughs> There's my money. Why you give the railroad to my money? Mr. Basco, we didn't give it to them. Oh, they took it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to never get it back. Some customers will buy a ticket to New York. He's a change his mind. Take it back of the ticket, and there it goes to my twenty dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna go and find out the house safe is in my money. Mr. Bass. No stopping me. I'm gonna go to the railroad company right now. I'm asking questions. <laughs> I'm asking the questions and I get the answer. That's America. <laughs> Desco, I've told you. The president of Santa Fe does not speak to people without appointments. Oh, well, he's going to talk to me. Just tell him it's a Luigi Basco fellow who's giving his arrel of the company $20. <laughs> $20? That's right, the $20. My bank is alone to without my permission, so now I'm a coming to collect it. <laughs> Just a minute. All right. Patty. Patty, some SP wants to see your boss. Will you please brush him off? Thanks. All right, Mr. Besco. You can see Mr. Crotham now, 18th floor. Well, I thank you, young lady. And I'm ahead of what you said about her brushing me off. But I don't know worry. If I'm going to get her back of my money, she's going to have to clean my suit. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Basco. You've been out there three hours making a commotion. You're a very persistent stockholder. Here, have a cigar. Oh, a cigar, huh? Your wife was to have a baby? <laughs> no, uh, it's a custom. We like to be nice. How much of these cigars are costing? A dollar each. A dollar, huh? How you can do such a thing? Do what? If you're so poor, you got to lend a twenty dollars from me. You should have smoked a cheaper cigar. <laughs> you, you have a wonderful sense of humor, sir. What's your problem? I'm a want to my twenty dollars. Well, this is silly. We're a railroad company. We don't give you money. Oh, you ain't got it. That the fellow who's a went to New York is a no good, just like I'm a said. Please, I'm too busy to waste my time. Uh, Miss Burton. We always like to please our stockholders, but I thought it was something important. Well, it sure is important. It's very important. You took my money. That's ridiculous. Miss Burton. No, no. Please, please, don't get excited. I'm going to like to squeeze you for the money. <laughs> but if you don't got the cash, maybe you pay me back like a bigger business in an installment. What? All right. I, I take a check, even if it's no good. You're being absurd. <laughs> Up a what? Absurd. I'm gonna know what this means, but I'm I'm gonna think it's no good. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm gonna get a wonderful idea. Keep the money. Give me twenty dollars a worth of trolley car transfers. <laughs> Miss Burton, pull this man out. All right, all right, I go, I go. But I'm gonna learn to my lesson. Good. Is it no good? And if you ever need a twenty dollars again, a don't to come to me. Well, 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 where you been? 
in all day, Luigi. Stay in the closer to my apron and strings, I hope. But, Squally, I'm, I had a terrible day. You was right. Bankers don't want to give me back my money because they lend it to railroad company. I'm went there to get it back, and, and they throw me expected. That trouble, <laughs> that trouble I'm never had with my mattress. <laughs> Luigi, it's just too bad, but you in the worst of trouble of your life. What the trouble, Pasquale? Lending the money without a license. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but the bankers are lending the money. Was they using your capital? Yes. Sir. It's even worse. You got to suffer capital punishment. <laughs> Capital, come on, mommy. Well, don't worry, Luigi. Pasquale is your friend. I know some big shots who maybe could help you out. Uh -huh. But uh, you know I only do these things uh, for fellas what's a happen to be my son-in-laws. <laughs> you mean a Russian? <laughs> what do you say, my son? Well, I was just going to... Mr. Basco. Uh, Mr. Mr. Hawkins. Mr. Basco, I'm glad I found you in. I've come to give you your twenty dollars. Here, it's from my own pocket. What? You mean the bank is a broker, but are you making a good? No, 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 it's not that. No, you see, your check was issued on the California bank, and we can't pay you back until the check clears. Did you got to clear it? You mean it was a dirty check? <laughs> no, 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 no. It simply means it must be honored on its own. Oh, well, what's the use? It's practically never that someone questions our bank, and I think I can take a chance and give you my money. I'll get it in a few days. Grab the Luigi. Be kind to your mattress. Huh? <laughs> no, 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 Pasquale. If for such a bigger man like a Mr. Hawkins is to take a chance, I'm going to take a chance at all. I'm glad you said that, Mr. Basco. And try to remember, your bank is something like a friend to you. Oh, of course, we're in business to make money from your money, but from us. And as a matter of fact, we're as solid as, um, well, as solid as the Rock of Gibraltar. Well, that's a solid enough for me, Mr. Hawkins. Here, have a cigar. That's a dollar one. And I'm going to walk with you to the bank. Thank you. Hey, Luigi, where you going? How's about a Rosa? Uh, no, Pasquale, we not talk about a Rosa. But why not? One rocket you brought is enough for one a day. <laughs> Well, Mamma Mia, everything has come out of fine. And I'm still going along with a big business. And I'm learned that the banks are a wonderful thing. Later on, I'm going to try to talk to Pasquale into putting his money into my bank. But was him impossible. He's a still a one to keep it in the same place. I'm going to tell him maybe somebody's going to come in and steal it. But he's a show it to me, and I'm wrong. Mamma Mia, you should have seen it. Look at that, Pasquale is a mattress. <laughs> You're loving the sun, Luigi Vasco, the little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that wherever you go, it's a good idea to have a package of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum along with you. In this way, you always have a tasty, refreshing treat right at your fingertips to enjoy whenever you want. It's a friendly thing to offer Wrigley Spearmint to other folks, too. They appreciate your thoughtfulness. So carry a package of healthful, delicious Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum in your purse or pocket at all times. See for yourself how often every day you're glad to have some Wrigley Spearmint with you. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mr. Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Derman. Jay Carroll Nash is starred as Luigi Pasco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Mary Ship as Miss Spalding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>